if I could say a few words at the start here and in, um, invite people up to speak. So, you know, honoured to do that and happy to do that. To just, to just explain, Grandmothers Against Removals are these amazing women and, their, and men right across, the, right across the country that have been standing up against the continuing stolen generation and the disgrace of the continued forced removal of Aboriginal children. You know, it's been very inspiring to be a part of that movement and to see that strength and to learn from that strength and wisdom of the, of the grandmothers. And it's, it's, it's good to be here in Perth to, to continue the struggle. But a quick word about Sorry Day, what Vanessa asked me to explain. The Bringing Them Home report came out in 1997 and the sorry day, May 26, is the anniversary of the day that that Bringing Them Home report actually came out. And most people out there, they think the Bringing Them Home report was just about the past. And it was about the past. It exposed the past. It called it for what it was. It said to the world that there was genocide perpetrated here in Australia, not just by the massacres that took place, but by the forced removal of the children that continued all through the 20th century. It said in black and white, this is a genocidal process. And it was demanding justice for that process. And a whole lot of demands about what could be done by the Australian government to actually redress uh, what was done in the past. One of them was an apology. One of them was an apology. One of the many, many things, and that's all that's been given is that apology. And I'll, I'll let other people speak to the apology. You know, I know that there's people here that suffered those forced removals. They're much better to, to comment on the question of the apology than myself. But the only thing that was given was an apology. But what people also don't know, what most people don't know, was the Bringing Them Home report also said clearly uh, that there was a continued issue with discrimination against Aboriginal people by child welfare services. And it said very clearly in the report that if things were allowed to continue as they were going, we'd have precisely the same situation with stolen generation now as was happening in the 20th century. And they made some recommendations about how to change that. The central one, and that's what grandmother's calling for, the central one was Aboriginal control of Aboriginal child welfare. All these child protection bodies got to get out of Aboriginal people's lives and get out of the Aboriginal community. That was a central demand. You read Bringing Them Home, it's there in black and white. It says there needs to be a national conference to start designing a national uh, child welfare system that's owned and controlled by the Aboriginal people and the child protection system's got to back off. That's what they said in 1997. But since 1997, things have gone exactly the other way. They've attacked and dismantled the community organisations. They've given billions of dollars to the child protection, child theft, stolen generations industry that exists in this country to go out there and continue to steal the children. One billion dollars every year is spent across this country stealing Aboriginal children and keeping them in foster care. One billion dollars is the amount of money this industry is worth every single year. And since bringing them home, the numbers have increased six times the amount of children being taken. Two and a half thousand children in out of home care, Aboriginal kids in out of home care, back in 1997, more than 15,000 today. A 600% increase. Look at that disgrace. And the only way... And the only way out of it is to, is to back off, get the boot, jackboot off the throat of the communities and give the power to the communities themselves. That's the only way to turn this around. So the, 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 last, the last point I'd make is just that we're protesting outside DCP today and people probably know that the Minister of DCP, Helen, what's her name, Morton, is it? Morton. Morton Helen Morton is leading the charge for the closure of communities across Western Australia. She's actually on the main organising committee for shutting these communities down. And she's going on things like Late Line and saying that the communities have got to be closed down because of child abuse. But we're here to say today the number one child abusers in the state of Western Australia is the Department of Child Protection. Yeah. Yeah. The number one abusers. The number one abusers. Raiding houses at night, raiding houses with police, dragging kids away, sending them hundreds of kilometres away from their family, keeping them off their land, keeping them off their culture. That is organised, systematic child abuse. Not to mention the abuse that goes on in care. What we're seeing in the Royal Commission. What we've seen coming out of the Royal Commission, the churches, the welfare mob, all this, they've protected historically those, those child abusers and that, that, that molestation that goes on. And you cannot tell us that those dynamics are still continuing today. Everyone's got those stories. 
So she's shamed, you know, complete shame for her to be talking about child abuse when it's her department that's perpetrating it. Let alone shutting down the communities, talk about child abuse. Force kids into homelessness on the, on the fringes of the major towns. But that's somehow protecting children. You know, so I'll just finish there. We, we've got to keep up the fight. Sorry Day was originally called as a day not just to commemorate and all that what they like to talk about now. It was a, a day to press demands. It was a day to say, bring them home has clear demands. Average of the child of Aboriginal child welfare. We're going to keep coming out and fighting until we get it. Thanks very much.